Hi guys, it's Mr. Mustafa here. In today's video, I will be solving the grade 12 IEB Advanced Program Mathematics Paper 1 2020. If you have not subscribed to my channel as yet, please subscribe to my channel for more contents and make sure to click the bell icon so you get the latest updates. So let us get straight into this paper and proceed to question one. 1. 1.1 1 .1 says, solve for x is an element of real numbers without using a calculator and showing all working. So 1.1a, 1. 1 two absolute value e to the power x minus five plus three is equal to 11. Make sure you have all the variables on one side, which is the absolute value of e to the power x minus five. So we take the three over, 11 minus three is eight, divided by two is four. So let us do 1.1. 1. 1. So what we are actually solving is two e to the power x minus five plus three is equal to 11. Absolute value of e to the power x minus five is equal to four. 11 minus three divided by two, basic algebra there. Now solving this equation, we can drop off the absolute value by squaring both sides. So what we can say is e to the power x minus five squared is equal to four squared, which is equal to four squared, which is equal to 16. Now, opening up this equation, we have e to the power two x minus 10, e to the power x plus 25, bring the 16 over, minus 16 is equal to zero. So we have e to the power two x minus 10, e to the power x, plus nine is equal to zero. Now solving this equation into two factors, factorizing this, what we can get is e to the power x minus one, e to the power x minus nine is equal to zero. Therefore, e to the power x is equal to one, which is the same thing as saying e to the power zero or e to the power x is equal to nine. Now, therefore, x is equal to zero, or x is equal to, you need to take ln on both sides. So the e falls off. Remember the rule, ln e to the power x is equal to x. Right. So we, if we ln both sides, you have a ln e that falls off and becomes x is equal to ln of nine. So these are your two solutions, x is equal to zero, or x is equal to ln nine. Now, if we just go back and look at this equation, what we can see is an alternative way to, a way to work out this part is breaking it up in two parts. What we can say is e to the power x minus five is equal to four, or e to the power x minus five is equal to negative four. When we drop the absolute value, we take one positive and one negative. The negative from this side, I've just moved it over right in brackets so what we're getting is e to the power x is equal to minus four plus five which is one and e to the power x is equal to nine so instead of doing this quadratic this way would have been much more easier anyways let us look at question 1.2 uh, sorry 1.1b ln x is equal to three very basic 1.1b ln x is equal to three now Remember the rule e to the power ln x is equal to x. So we're going to ln both sides, or sorry, e both sides. So e to the power ln x is equal to e cubed. Therefore, x is equal to e cubed. And we have our two marks. Right, so we've got seven marks and two marks, that's nine. Right, 1.2. 1 in 1.2, we want to go and simplify this complex number. The complex number is a plus bi over, determine a and b if a plus bi over five minus i. So what they're saying is a plus bi, a plus bi over five minus i, a plus bi over five minus i is equal to half plus half i is equal to is equal to half plus 
half i. So to solve for a and b, what we can use is we can use equating coefficients, equating coefficients, right? So let us equate coefficient. In other words, let us go and simplify the left-hand side and then we can equate it to the right-hand side because the result of this is half plus half i, right? So to simplify this, what we can say is So can be written as left hand side can be simplified as a plus b i over five minus i times five plus i over five plus i. We want to make the base an integer by multiplying by the conjugate. Right, so we're multiplying by the conjugate. Right. So simplifying this will give us 5a in the numerator, 5a. Also note that i squared is equal to minus one. So a times five is 5a, a times i is plus ai, plus bi times five is 5bi, plus bi squared, which is minus b divided by 25 minus minus one, <clears throat> which is equal to simply, which is equal to all over 26. For the numerator, we are looking at the real part, which is five A minus B plus a complex part, which is A plus five B I. <clears throat> now we need to equate these to half plus half i. So the real part gets equated to the real part and the complex part gets equated to the complex part. Now, if we look at the real part, which is this, the complex part is this. Now, 5a minus b over 26 is equal to half. Right, is equal to the real part. And a plus five b is equal to a plus five b over 26 is also equal to half. Now, simplifying these two equations, we get 10 <clears throat> a minus two b is equal to 26 cross multiplying. 5a minus b is equal to 13. And cross multiplying, 2a plus 10b is equal to 26. So what we have here is a plus 5b is equal to 13. So a is equal to 13 minus 5b. <clears throat> 13 minus 5b. So five into 13 method of substitution, 13 minus five B minus B is equal to 13. So 65 minus 25 B minus B is equal to 13. So solving for A gives us, I have to solve for A, sorry, solving for B, so minus 26 B is equal to 13 minus 65. If I work with 13 minus 65, I will get minus 52. Therefore, B is equal to two. Now if B is equal to two, substituting into A, we have 13 minus five times two. Therefore, A is equal to three. It's a good habit to check your answer. Let us check the answer if a is equal to three and b is equal to two on the calculator, right? So what we will be entering is, make sure your calculator is in complex mode. I'm using the FX, uh, FX 991 ZA plus calculator. So if I put my fraction, I want to enter, I'm, I'm just double checking my answer. 
So it was A is two and B was, uh, sorry, A is three, B is two. Look at this left-hand side. We said A is two, uh, uh, A is, answer for A was three. A is three, B is two. So I'm going to enter this as it is in the calculator, B is two. And see if I get the answer, half plus half I. So I'm going to write three plus two shift I, which is that ENG button divided by five minus shift I, which is equal to half plus half I. Perfect, guys. So that is my solution. Now, looking at the next question, which is 1.3. In question 1.3, we want to find determined in standard form a quartic degree four equation with the rational coefficients, right? Where two of the roots are two plus i and one minus root i. Now, if two of the roots are two plus i or one minus root three, we use something called the conjugate search theorem. It basically states that if one of your root is two plus i in the complex form, the other one has to be two minus i. And if this is one plus root three, the other root has to be one plus root three. In other words, the opposite sign, right? Let's have a look at something called the conjugate Right, conjugate search theorem. Oh, you don't have to know the exact wording of the conjugate search theorem. You can just look at, you can just remember for a complex number, if one of the roots is complex, the other one has to be a complex conjugate. If one of the roots is a third, the other one has to be the exact same thing with a third with the opposite sign. So looking at question 1.3, Solving 1.3, we want to find a polynomial with degree four. So two plus i. So my roots are so what we can say. My roots are One point three. So, what way my roots is going back? Two plus i one minus root three. Two plus i and my second root one minus root three. So let us look at this one. So what we can say is two plus i into two minus i, right? So that's what we, now since it is a root, so what we need to say, root one, root two. So remember this is equal to x, this is also equal to x. My uh, root three will basically be two minus i, which is a conjugate of this call this x, o, remember we write o, o, o root four will be one plus square root of three, which is also equal to x. So let us simplify these first and then simplify these. Since they said root, it needs to be equal to zero, right? So x minus two plus i, my first root, right, then into x minus two minus i, right? And for the right-hand side, we have x minus one minus square root of three, x minus one plus square root of three. Now, this here is equal to on the left-hand side. If you open up everything, remember, let us simplify the inside first. So what we have is x minus two minus i, x minus two plus i. So if we group these, 
we end up with difference of two squares with a minus i and a plus i. So what we actually have is x minus two, all squared minus i squared. Simplifying the left-hand side, if I have to simplify this, I will get x squared minus four x plus four plus one, because this is minus one. Minus minus one is plus one. So what we have is x squared minus four x plus five on the left-hand side. Then this one here, continue, continuing this in a similar manner, what we have is x minus one minus root three into x minus one plus root three. Again, we have difference of two squares. Sorry, not x minus i, x minus one. What we have is x minus one all squared minus root three squared. So what we have here is x squared minus two x plus one minus three. So what we have is x squared minus two x minus two. Now, we wanted to find a polynomial with degree four. So of course, we need to go and multiply these two out. So multiplying these two out, what we can say is x squared minus four x plus five into x squared minus two x minus two is equal to zero. Now, Opening up all these will give us the answer. So let's see how to open them up. Right. So x to the power four, x squared times x is x squared, x to the power four, x squared minus two x is minus two x cubed minus two x squared. Right. Looking at these terms, minus four x multiplied by the second bracket, we have minus four x cubed, minus four x times so plus eight x squared, minus four x times minus two is plus eight x, and five times the second bracket, which is five x squared, minus 10 x, minus 10 is equal to zero. Now we can see we have x to the power four, minus six x cubed, adding up these like terms here, minus two x squared plus eight x plus five, 13 minus two, which is 11 plus 11 x squared minus two x minus 10 is equal to zero. So going back to the question, this is our polynomial with degree four that has these two roots, including the other roots. So these are the other roots. So going back to the question, question asks, but determine in standard form a quartic degree four equation with the rational coefficients where two of the roots are two plus i and one minus root three. So are the coefficients rational? Going back, let us look at the equation. X to the power four minus six x cubed plus 11 x squared minus two x minus 10 is equal to zero. Yes the coefficients are 